Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 124 of the Sophie Art Podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things. And today it is another little article, <laughs> article from issue number six of the Character Design Quarterly magazine. And this is actually one of my all-time favourite covers. It's got a piece of like fan art from the video game Horizon Zero Dawn. And it's such a beautiful cover, but the article we're looking at today is really fun. It's called Designing for Children's Books with Julian Julia Christens. I think this is going to be really fun today, so we're going to get into it in a minute. You might be able to hear some background noises, because there's actually some people in in the garden putting up scaffolding. So I've had to shut the window. It's so hot and warm today that I've got the fan on. So you might hear noises from outside in the garden of people banging and crashing. (laughs) And you might be able to hear the fan as well, but hopefully it'll be alright. It kind of adds a bit of atmosphere (laughs) to this podcast because everything is going to get blown about, which I think is quite cool actually. So if you're watching on video at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson, you can see all my notes getting blown about, (laughs) which is quite cool. But little Dennis is here with us. He's currently having a bit of fun with Kitty the cat in his little house. I think we're going to get straight into this one. Because I'm really excited for this. So little Kitty comes out. Boing! Dennis has said it is time to go. So let's get into this one. It's going to be really fun, I think. It's issue number six of the Character Design Quarterly magazine. And the little article, it's not this one. <laughs> that was another one. That's, yeah, I've got another article here called Transforming a Character, which is going to be a future article. It's really fun. It, it's, um, you've, what they do is they take a character, like a human, and they turn it into a little animal, which is really fun. That's definitely going to be a future one. But today's little article is called Designing for Children's Books by Julia Christians. Now, where's my little website from? I need to find out them. Julia Christians has got a little website at what's the website address? JuliaChristians.de. So I'll put a link in the what do you call it show notes. But what I love here on her little website, her her characters are so fun. They're really fun, and what they do is they turn little like diggers into characters and stuff. There's a couple here that I love. They're really, really fun. They're like, they're sort of, what would I say? They're just like fun. It's almost like you're going back into your childhood looking at these little drawings. And there's always like a connection between a human and an animal, which I've always loved that. So I'll put a link to her website in the show notes. But in the back of this Character Design Quarterly magazine, they actually have little bios of the artists. So for, for Julia, she's a freelance graphic designer and illustrator. And her little website is juliachristians.de. Got a little happy face of her. She looks really cool. And it says, Julia is an illustrator from Germany. She studied communications design and now works freelance on editorial and children's books illustrations. Which is cool. Now, one of the things is, one of my little dreams is to create a little, a little children's book with my character, Little Sophie, who's a transgender character. And I've got so many ideas in my head. And I've got to start turning these ideas into actual things. So I, I just, I really got excited reading this little article. Uh, if you hear banging, it's the people outside. But this little article is split into six main bits with a little bonus piece. But it's instead of the other articles, which have been sort of working through the process of creating something, like a piece of artwork, this is more like little tips. Little tips about designing a children's book. So the little tips we've got are use all the body parts, try new emotions, accessorise, practice repetition making adjustments and creating variety and then there's a little bonus piece like another little bonus tip 
about presenting to art directors. So this this is quite a little article, only on two pages, but like I, I feel like there's so much, so much goodness in here, which is it's quite cool. How much goodness is in these little tips? So what I do on these little articles is I've I've got my notes. I just go through my notes, talking about stuff, and going through the articles. Well, so the main takeaways I got from this article is that it's about pushing your design and ideas. So not stopping when you think you're finished, which I think that's a really good one. Thinking about the family of characters. So you're not just thinking about your main character. It's talking also about thinking about the family of characters, which is, I like that. One of the main things I would say is that Julia is always asking questions. Like, does this character have a tail? And if, if it does have a tail, is it a big tail? Is it a little tail? So it's constant asking questions, which is something I've noticed in the other articles. You have to keep asking questions to really understand your character. Because once you understand your character, it, it will almost come to life on its own once you start drawing. So I like that. Also put here being curious, which is asking the questions, but also experimenting and playing. And then I've put in big letters experiment. A lot of this is about experimenting, which I love that because to me, experimenting is sort of fun and it's freeing because if you're doing an ex experiment, it's it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, which I think that's cool. So if you if you always look at things as you're doing an experiment, you can't fail because if it did say fail, all that is is it, it means you're going to do another experiment afterwards. Yeah, you'll do another experiment afterwards, which might not fail, and the next one wouldn't fail because the first one did fail. So sometimes you have to fail to find the right path, I think, and stuff. I've also put here, do what's fun for you. I love that, and I always do that. It's one of the reasons I stopped drawing realistic pencil drawings so much, is because I wasn't having as much fun. And even though my characters are shite <laughs> my characters are really not very good at the moment i know that but i'm having fun with them so i would rather do rubbish artwork but have fun than do amazing artwork but not be enjoying it i think that's more important to me fun is the key to life i think that the power of accessories i've put as well it's amazing that I can't wait for this bit. The, when we talk about accessories, it, it's going to be fun. That yeah, the power of accessories. I've also put here. Keep on sketching. So again, don't stop when you think. Don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> no, don't stop when you think you're done. Keep on sketching. And then I've also put here. Let the character guide you. So again, it's this thing. Once you 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 ask the questions, you understand the the character. Because the, you understand the character, the character almost starts creating itself for you. I've noticed that so many times. So again, you keep on sketching because you're not really sketching at some point. It's like the character's sketching itself. It's cool. But looking at Julia's artwork, not just in this article, but also on her website, the words I got was playful, simple, happy... It's like they're in their own little world. And she said a word in, her, in the, during the article, which I thought, ah, oh, that word actually sums it up better than anything I come up with. And it's quirkiness. Her character and her artwork is very quirky. And what's that other word? Whimsical. Yeah, a little bit whimsical. But I love that. So if we get into this little article, what I do is I'll start by reading the little intro... Oh, and in this article, what she does is, she's she's designing a little, like a rabbit character. Again, he's very simple, but he's got so much fun about him. And you can tell he's a cheeky little chappy, really. I, I feel like he's a fun character for a story, because you can just tell he gets up to stuff, which is really cool. But in the, the, little, the little intro says, Designing characters for children can be easy and fun, because you can use almost anything that comes to mind to make the characters stand out. 
it is important to make your main character highly recognisable to allow young readers to spot them easily in the story. And then it says, here are my tips to give you give your characters the originality and quirkiness that will help you to achieve this. So in my little notes, what was I said here? Oh, the first thing I've put is, yeah, one of my goals is to create a little book. There's, yeah, when she said the main character has to be highly recognisable to stand out, what it, it made me think of um, silhouettes. Yeah, silhouettes. So the silhouettes will help you work out how to get the character to stand out. But I've also put here, <laughs> this is quite funny. So the main character is going to be standing out. The rest of the characters in the story, I almost look at them now as like extras. Like in, in a film or something, in a TV show. All these little background extras. Yeah, because... I've started. I've been watching anime for the past week or so, and I've done a really fun thing. I've gone back to what I used to do back in like tw- 2013 or something. I'd watch anime, and as I'm watching them, I'd just pause them and st- start doing little sketches. But what I've noticed is because I, I I did this article and then I watched an anime episode. The anime I'm watching at the minute is called "Is It Wrong to Pick Up a Girlfriend." in a in a dungeon or something it's really fun it's this little boy character he's like a level one adventurer and he's going into this little dungeon fighting monsters it's quite fun but i was looking at it and i noticed when you've got a scene full of like hundreds of characters the background characters are very simple they've got no details about them and they almost all blend into each other so it, it creates the illusion of loads of characters but the main characters are the ones with all the accessories and like all the details, so they pop. I really like that. So again, what I like about these articles is you start learning things and then you start noticing the things that you're being taught So in everyday life. So it, it feels like no matter what you're doing, even if you're watching an anime, you're, you can still be sort of studying, which is quite fun. But this article starts off with, it says, use all the body parts. So in my little notes, I've put, (laughs) I've put, know thyself. Yeah. How they say about know thyself, I feel like you can use that for a character. The first thing you've got to do is know thyself. So know the character. You've got to know the character so well that you can, you don't even have to think about it anymore. And I've put here, ask questions and more questions. I've also put play with the shapes. And then this is where I've like highlighted the word curiosity. Use the body parts. So what she's talking about is, think about your character. And for this one, it's a rabbit. So she says, has the rabbit got, well, has it got a tail? And then if it has got a tail, is it a big one? And then has it got ears? Is it big floppy ears? And what she's done is, She's made the ears massive. So what she's done is she's worked out the parts of the character and then to give it give the character character, she's exaggerated pieces of the of the character, which I think is cool. And I've put here over exaggerate big floppy ears. And then what I realised was if you make the ears really big and floppy, that's actually gonna help your silhouette. Because in the silhouette, you're going to have these big shapes of the ears. And so just by doing that, you've now done the thing that she said about, which is making sure your main character is highly recognisable. Because he's going to stand out now because he's got big ears. So what you could do is, all the other rabbits in the story, they could have smaller ears or something. Little things like that. There's so many ways to make your character stand out whilst you can still make all the other characters in the story feel like they're a family of characters. Which, it's really cool, this. Yeah, she's putting about the gesture and stuff as well. Because her characters are very lively. She's cool. I really like that bit. I think it's cool. And I've put it here. Yeah, once... I I keep repeating this, because I think it's what happens is know thyself. Once you know the character... The character will tell you. 
It's almost like you start asking questions. It's almost like you're asking questions to the character. And the, the character starts telling you. And the way it tells you is with the shapes. So like it starts guiding you with these little shapes and stuff. It's cool. I've noticed that with these the draw day challenge. The next piece is called Try New Emotions. And on my little notes I've put... Well, on her little thing here, she's got two little characters. One's looking like he's shocked. And then the other one's just going like a normal little hello. She's got these two little emotions. But I love this bit. She says about experimenting. Try things that you don't normally do. Like poses and emotions. Because definitely I've noticed with my draw day challenge, I have a tendency to play it too safe. And I always sort of do the same sort of poses. Yeah, but she's saying, no, try try new things. So a way you can do this is something she says about later, which she says about somewhere here, she says about keep going. When you think you, you've done your design, keep going. So what that means is you can actually, you can do a design, like of a static pose that you normally do, a pose that you're good at, I suppose you're playing it safe but once you've done that pose you've banked the character in that pose you can now play around with the other poses because you can always say to yourself well i'll play around with some poses if it doesn't work out it doesn't matter because i've got that one banked so banking a pose starting out with like poses that you're good at it will it will allow you to experiment later on instead of trying to go straight to a pose you've never done before because what that's going to do is it's going to frustrate you because you're going to struggle with it because it's new and then you might end up being so sort of a little bit frustrated that when you try to do the pose you you normally do you'll struggle with it because you're now getting a bit frustrated i put here in my notes fun the big word if you're not having fun Oh, I've put, if you're having fun, the viewer will have fun. Yeah, that's something else I've noticed as well. You can always tell when an artist is enjoying themselves because somehow the character has the funness in them. And it, it's the same the other way. If, if, the, if somebody's doing a drawing or something, you can somehow tell if the person was sort of not really... I suppose if they were like phoning it in. Like if they couldn't be bothered, because sometimes with a realistic drawing, you do go through phases where you're like, oh, I, I can't be asked," <laughs> And I can always tell when that happens. And I can see it in others' works as well. So I feel like the main thing you've got to do is think about fun. If you're having fun, the character is going to have fun, which means the viewer will have fun. So I feel like fun is the main thing. And again, a way to do that is experimenting. And a way to have fun with experimenting instead of having frustration is to like bank your designs. So play it safe at the start and then start taking risks. That was something in one of the other articles. The artist called Bryn. She, she, she said about using tracing paper to build up your design because you could always fall back to previous versions. It's, it's fun little ways of taking risks without really taking a risk. I've also put in my notes extremes. So again, over-exaggerate, because exaggeration equals fun. It's, it's fun because it's over the top bonkers. And you can go over the top with emotions, poses, like the proportions, because she's made the ears so big. She's, it's, it's fun, because the, the, the ears almost become alive. So you've got like a funness to the to the ears. So you can play with the proportions, the emotions, which is going to affect the gestures and the poses and stuff. And then also the behaviour. So like you could have a character, say, doing something silly. And that's going to be fun as well. So I thought, I thought that was really fun. Really fun. Have fun trying out extreme emotions like anger. Yeah, but also more extreme obscure emotions such as such as curiosity or sleepiness i like this i think a fun thing to do would be to go onto one of those websites that lists emotions and you could just look at it and say 
I'm going to try and draw this emotion. My my problem is I always I I play it too safe, so I've got to, I've got to I've got to find ways to push myself, I suppose. And I think that might be a way to do it is to yeah, just find a list of words and then say I'm going to try and turn this into a character or something. This next bit I think is my favorite bit of the article. It's called Accessorize. And what she's got is four little characters which are all pretty much the same but each one's got little accessories on it so what I've put here is ah oh, I like this because I do photos I go up to Saltram taking little photos what I noticed was if I've got an accessory whilst I'm posing for photos it's actually way more fun coming up with well the accessory let's say you're holding an umbrella you're holding that umbrella it starts like dictating the poses you're going to do and you start doing really strange poses that you you've never done before because you've got this umbrella and also you can sort of almost hide behind the umbrella so it sort of frees you up a bit well it's the same with these little characters because what i noticed was in one of my draw day challenges i it was a month of kevy the cat and little kevy the cat he had a walking stick and what, what I noticed was this walking stick, it allowed me to play with the poses. That was one way I was able to s stop playing it safe. Because I, I started turning the walking stick into a gun. And, oh, what was it? What, one of them, it was a helicopter. So I could, I, it's almost like at that point I had not only the character that I could play with, but I also had the accessories. So again, it was like, it was like the accessories started changing the way the character was behaving and it's really fun that but I've put here accessories help to be more playful and unpredictable I think that's cool unpredictable and then I've put it also helps with the silhouettes again for impactful design because if if you've got a walking stick with like a long straight shapes and the character's all curvy the silhouette's going to look cool now because you're going to have curviness but also straight bits. So again, it goes back to that thing she said about having your character be highly recognisable. One way you can do that is by having accessories, which I think is cool. They also give personality because they show a story and how they behave. So again, that if you've got the character with a walking stick, you start thinking, well, why has he got a walking stick? So you, it starts creating like a little story and they they behave differently with these accessories. Like on one of these, she's actually got a character with a walking stick and he's like bending over. So straight away that walking stick, it changes the feeling of the character because he suddenly feels older. Whereas if, if, you had, if you took the walking stick away and he was just bending over, you wouldn't, you'd, you'd sort of think, why is he bending over? You wouldn't really know. So these walk these accessories comes into something she says later on about creating variety. That is quite good actually. All these little tips, they all sort of play together. Which is why I think this article is a lot different to the other ones. The other ones were like walking through a process. This is more like tips that, that they all sort of build together. It's quite cool. I've also per story yeah, why have they got a walking stick? Oh, I thought, what I thought of was I thought of the turtles. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because I remembered they always had pizza. Especially Michelangelo, he loved his pizza. and Because I, I loved the turtles growing up. Thundercats and the turtles were my two favourites. And maybe the Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters cartoon. But Michelangelo, he always had a pizza. So you, these accessories can start actually creating fun because you could have for instance in the middle of a battle with the turtles you could have them start eating pizza which is a bit of fun so it's not just the character that has the character the accessories almost have a, a life of their own as well and then i've put here again exaggerate try random unusual accessories yeah so don't just think just 
yeah, try try lots of different things really, I suppose. That's the main thing, like experimenting and having fun. And I put here, little things equals big impact. It is amazing how putting a pair of glasses on a character, it completely changes the character. Even though it's the same character, it's got a different feeling about it. So it's quite cool. And then also, when she says about creating like a family of characters later on, you could even use accessories. So you could have, let's say, 20 rabbits that all look the same, but they're all, they've all got different accessories on. And it might be the, the main character has, say, I don't know, loads of accessories, and the other ones have got little ones. <laughs> Something like that. But you can start playing with the accessories as well. Which I think is really, really cool. The next bit is called practice repetition. Again, this reminds me of Lee Hammond's quote about repetition is the key to learning. Practice is the key to success. Because this, this little bit of the article I've put, yeah, don't be satisfied with, what's that? Don't be satisfied with how they look. Yeah, don't be satisfied with how they look keep pushing yourself and it it reminds me of lee hammond again because she said in her book keep rendering the hair so if you're doing realistic pencil drawing of hair you get to this point because it's it's a it's a three-step process you put your lines down you then use an eraser to erase some of the lines you then use a tortillion to blend it and then you go right back to the start you put more lines down you keep repeating that and it builds up the hair t to create depth. What happens is, you get to a certain point where you think, ah, oh, that looks right now. But Lee Hammond always said, when you get to that point, you're probably not even halfway there. So in other words, you think you've got the hair looking full enough. But it's amazing how if you keep going, it looks even more fuller. And it does get to a point where you reach a point where it, that diminishing returns. It's... You get to a point where it's not worth the effort of putting more layers. But it's always later than you think. And it's the same thing here. She's talking about create your little character. You might create it and think, oh, I've nailed it. It looks perfect. But she, what Julia says here is she says, keep going. Keep sketching. In other words, keep sketching it even when you think you've sorted it. Because it's amazing how you might you might create something even better. And if you don't create something even better, you might create something like a little piece of it that you can put into the one you had. So you might you might create a character that is perfect. You keep going and you might, for instance, put a pair of shoes on the, the new one. And you think, well, I like the first one better. But you take the shoes from the, from the second one and put them on the first one. So it's never wasted, I think. If you keep sketching, it's never wasted. What else did I put down here? I've put keep depth. What I've put depth? <laughs> oh, consistency. Keep drawing your character. Oh, yeah. She talks about consistency. This is this is something I really struggle with, but I'm getting a lot better at it. What it is is you draw a character. It, it's amazing how trying to draw the same character in different poses. It's amazing how how hard that is for me. It really is quite hard, but she's saying here, keep drawing your character, and in the end, you you won't have to think about it. And I'll tell you what, he, I'll tell you what, this this artist Dean Yeagle, I can tell that he has drawn. He's got this character called Mandy, and I've been watching videos about him because I've I feel like Dean Yeagle might well become my new most favourite inspirational artist. But I've been watch, I was watching a video of him actually yesterday and what he what he, what I've noticed was he can draw Mandy in any pose without even thinking about it because he's obviously drawn her so many times that he, yeah he, I reckon he could even shut his eyes and draw her so it's quite cool I put he, she, what she says in this little bit is she says sketch your character a lot and I really mean a lot this is what reminded me of Lee Hammond it's that thing you're going to sketch and you think oh You've, d you've done it enough. You haven't. The more you draw it, the more the design will develop. 
Even when you are satisfied with how the character looks, draw even more to get consistency in your drawings. I've really got to take note of that because I definitely don't draw my characters enough and that's why, I'm, that's why I struggle to draw them in different poses. It's really hard though because you're trying to draw stuff and it doesn't look good. So I, I always find that a little bit frustrating because I think, oh, because in my head things look really good and it never looks like it. Yeah, it's, it's quite, it is a mental game this, I think, drawing things from your imagination because your mind, yeah, the mind definitely sort of makes you feel, it, it tries to sabotage me, I think. The next bit of the story, <laughs> next bit of the story, next bit of the article is called Make Adjustments. I love this. This is this sort of goes back into the other one about keep sketching your character because that's the character will develop. Keep making adjustments. So I put here, think about the story. Again, ask questions. Does it play basketball? If yes, if yes, it plays basketball. So if your character is going to be playing basketball, but the design of your character can't play basketball, then you're going to have to change the design of your character. This goes back into something else in the other articles. The story, the story is going to influence your character and the character influences the story. So, because you might have a story and you're saying, right, well, in this story, I've got this character who's always wearing sexy outfits or something. But your character has to be shaped to wear these sexy outfits. So it's like everything's sort of playing against each other. It's quite cool. But it's always about thinking about the story. I'm noticing that in all these articles. And I've put it here. Yeah, I've got an example from Ollie the Owl. So I created a little character called Ollie the Owl. And all he was was a blob. He was just like a like an upside down teardrop. And at first I thought this is cool. And then after about five or so days of drawing him for the draw day challenge, I noticed he was actually too limited. Because all he was was a blob. I couldn't really play with him. So I started thinking, I was like coming up with ideas. He's going to, for instance, play basketball. But he, I couldn't work out how to make a blob play basketball. And then doing reading this article, I realised it wasn't just the character that was limited. It was actually me. I was too limited because because I didn't limit I limited myself to not change the design. So what I should have done was when I realised I couldn't really play with this blob, I should have actually said to myself, right, I'm going to change the design. But what had happened was I'd sort of said to myself, this is what he looks like. So I sort of box myself in. So that's something I've learned there is the character you've come up with might not actually be able to satisfy your needs. So that means you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and redesign the character. So I, I think that's another one there, a good little tip. Because what happened was with Ollie, because I said to myself, no, I'm not changing the design. I started just coming up with boring ideas because I was limited by the blob. So that's quite, it's quite interesting that. I've also put it here, it's not just the character that has to adapt and evolve, you do too. Which I think is amazing. There's like this relationship going on between you and the character. It's very cool. And then a little quote from this article here, this little bit of the article. She says, the character must be functional as well as en engaging. So in other words, the priority is fun. It's all about fun, especially for children's books. It's all about fun and exaggerate and play with the shapes and stuff. But you have to make sure it's it's believable. So there's this, again, a balance going on between experimenting, exaggerating and having fun, but always being mindful of keeping it believable. I think that's really quite important. I love that. That was almost going to be the quote this week. But the, the quote is really cool. This week's inspiration quote. What's it about? Yeah, it's always it's about not going with the first idea. The final little tip of the article is called creating variety. Instantly thought of Jake Parker when I started reading this. Because he was always talking about f 
creating variety in your lines and stuff. But in my little notes, I put a set of characters. So she she talks about use different body shapes, races, and ages in your designs to add variety between your characters. So until that point, I'd only really been thinking about the main character. But what I realised was a story. There's more than the main character with a story. And again, these other characters are going to actually change the look of your character. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. You've got to design your main character. You've got to design your little side characters. But the design of the side characters will have an impact on the main character. And the design of the main character will impact the side characters. So it's almost like you've sort of got to... You've got to sort of think about everything at once. It's a little bit overwhelming. I think the, the key though is to start with your main character. And the key to starting with the main character is to be asking questions about the character. Because I think what's going to happen is you ask these questions. These questions are going to... They're almost going to create the characters for you. Because you're going to say, what is this character? Is he is a rabbit? So now you know you've got at least one rabbit... If, you've, if it's one rabbit, there's a chance there's going to be like a family of rabbits. And then you start thinking, does he play basketball? If he plays basketball, you now know your characters are going to be wearing potentially like basketball outfits and stuff. Yeah, the basketball is a round shape. So everything starts coming out of the questions. I feel like, yeah, the thing I keep reading in these articles is the power of writing so it's all about stories and asking questions it's almost like the the drawing doesn't happen until you know in your head what you're drawing it's quite cool but once you do start drawing you're still you don't know what you're drawing you know what you want to draw but the act of drawing is going to actually change the drawing it's quite weird it's fun though i love this this article has made me really fun <laughs> it's made me fun it's made me excited it's made me really excited so a set of characters equals different shapes races and ages which creates the variety and i've put here other articles talked about how shapes work together and how to have balance and continuity between characters or how to have opposites together so some of the other articles, they were talking about how different shapes have feelings and how these feelings interact with each other. So again, when you're creating this family of characters, you're going to be thinking about these shapes and stuff. It's quite cool. Character. Oh, what have I put here? Her drawings all look the same but different, like a family of rabbits. Yeah, she's got three little rabbits here. A little one, which looks like looks like a little child an older one which looks like he's old because he's got a walking stick and bending over and then you've got another one he looks sort of like a medium size so they all look the same but they actually do all look different it's quite cool i thought that's quite cool and then what i love here she says about go outside and do life drawing to see people's shapes gestures poses accessories and you'll realise we are not all the same. I noticed that as well because I went through probably a year of sketching people outside. And the first thing that hit me was how how completely different people's poses are. And you, d you don't notice it until you start sketching because you sort of think everyone looks the same. When you start sketching people, because you're you're sketching them as they're walking... You've got about 10 seconds to try to capture them. So what happens is you you capture their essence in like a line or something. And you, when you look back at your sketches, you notice some of them are like leaning forward as they're walking. Some of them are up straight. And you, you start realising, wow, like everyone is actually radiating, I suppose, like a a feeling without even realising it, which is... I like that. And then she says, could have all the same character shapes. I've put, you could have all the characters have the same shapes, but play with the accessories. 
or the colours to set them apart. Yeah, it's quite cool that. And then we've got a bonus little piece which is called Presenting to Art Directors. And she's talking about when you apply for an illustration job in the children's book industry, show the art director you can handle your characters in any situation. So what did I put here? Draw characters in different situations, angles and poses. Draw them interacting with different characters. And then what I've put here is article said before about banking so it's I've put what I'll put here don't go for the first idea draw more to see if they push to see if you can push the character a little further yeah and I've put if you bank the character that will help you push the character and then I've put design push to the limit yeah push to the limit if it breaks go back to the banked one so I've put the banked one allows you the confidence to play and then we've put it here, so you will you will find new ideas, but pushing it when banked equals freedom. Yeah, I like this. What I, what I realised was if you bank your designs and keep going, you're going to push it until you break it. But what's going to happen is you're going to find new ideas. But because you've got one banked, that gives you the freedom to start pushing your designs because you can always fall back and what I noticed was freedom is cre creates creativity I feel like creativity comes out of freedom because if, you, if you're not feeling free yeah you don't have the creativity it goes back to what I said earlier I limited myself with this Ollie the Owl I limited myself to the design so I didn't have any freedom because I didn't have any freedom in the design it meant I didn't have any freedom in the drawings because the, the drawing comes out of the design. So it, it's really important, I think, to make sure you're, you've got the freedom to push yourself. I feel like that's sort of the key to everything. If you're not free, yeah, if you, if, if you think about it, everything in life comes about freedom, really. Freedom is key. But I think the main thing out of this article is it's about fun. It's about fun and I feel like the main thing is about not sticking with, not being afraid to push yourself I suppose. Keep pushing yourself even when you think you've got it the way you want it, your, your character designs. But it, it is definitely easier said than done because the amount of times I've done a, a draw day drawing and I go with my first design. It's definitely something I need to practice. Yeah, if you've got any tips on how to remind yourself, I suppose, to push yourself. Because what happens is I, I sort of forget. I, I go with my first design and it's not that I'm going with it without pushing. It's just that I forget to push it. So I need to find a way to make it a habit of pushing my designs. Maybe it goes into thumbnailing, because thumbnailing is all about, yeah, it's all about experimenting. Maybe that's the problem, I don't do enough thumbnails. Yeah, I would, I would say maybe that's a good thing, practice thumbnails. Because I, I did start doing thumbnails, but I've somehow I just didn't turn it into a habit. I, I don't really do thumbnails now, so I need to go back, I need to go back to that, thumbnails. I need to remind myself, I think, thumbnails. Because again, with the thumbnails, you can really experiment and play risk-free. Because it's only a little thumbnail. It doesn't matter if it's rubbish. Basically, that's it, though. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought that was cool. That's one of my favourite articles, I think. Because it's just... I like the way it was set up. Where it was more like little tips. It was little tips that are so simple but I can just feel that they're powerful that's the end of that little Dennis has decided it's game over son <laughs> game over son he's funny he is little Dennis but let's put him back in his little house oh actually Dennis is staying up for this I hope you enjoyed that I thought it was so much fun it's so much fun because it's like simple little tips which I think are super powerful 
so hopefully you had enjoyed yourself I, I, I really enjoyed that but all that's left is this week's little inspirational quote you can find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com little dennis does a click bing <laughs> and you can also find videos at youtube.com slash sophie lawson but all that's left is this week's inspirational quote and it goes to julia julia christians from this article i love this yeah i really love this because i've actually experienced this myself during the draw day challenge so this one really i can relate to it but this week's little inspirational quote is do not always go for your first idea draw more options to see if you can push your character a little further <laughs> so i love that because so many times i've thought i've designed a little character for the draw day challenge and i thought oh, i like that and then i'll do another one and the next one's better but it's really cool that so i think again it's one of those little tips which is really simple because all you've got to do is remember don't go with your first idea in other words let yourself experiment and play a bit more because you might find something even more exciting so it's a simple little tip all you've got to do is make sure you remind yourself to not go with your first idea and the rest will happen on its own which is quite cool so this week's little inspirational quote do not always go for your first idea draw more options to see if you can push your character a little further Julia Christians. <laughs> I like that. It's cool. Hot, hot cocklet. <laughs> I thought of hot cocklet now. We've got cock ices and hot cocklet. Hot cocklet is the best, I think. I was thinking next week I might merge a hot cocklet with a hot with a cock ice. I wonder what a cock ice with hot cocklet would taste like. Um, that's delicious. <laughs> Look at it. Mm, you get chocolate on your teeth and stuff. Mm, I love that.